What is up guys, Doc Redstone here, and today I am doing a Minecraft Science video tutorial on the anvil. Now anvils are very unique because they can be used to repair items and you can get enchantments that you normally wouldn't be able to enchant such as uh, Sharpness 5, Bane of Arthropods 5, Efficiency 5, uh, enchantments of that lot. So they're extremely useful for enchanting some extremely awesome stuff. Now each anvil every time it is used has a 12% chance that it will become damaged and once it becomes very damaged it will eventually break. Now anvils can be used to enchant a variety of things such as a head plate, breast plate, pant plate, and feet. It can be used to enchant diamond swords and even things such as books. What the heck is that doing in there? Much better. Alright, so now here we are in the Anvil GUI, and uh, we have two slots here. Now this first slot always is going to go the item that you want to uh, merge with. And be careful what item you put in here, because actually based upon the order, the level and uh, outcome of the enchantment can be different. And we'll go over that in a bit. Now the second slot, you can either put whatever item you want to merge in, and in this case we'll have a diamond sword with sharpness 4 or we will be able to put diamonds in there if this is damaged and be able to repair the sword uh, and keep the enchantment for a slightly less cost. Now you can see both of these swords have sharpness 4 on them and uh, it's just a simple sharpness 4 enchantment. This is the first time these swords have ever been repaired and so it's a simple cost of 7 and you'll get a sharpness 5 sword. Now you can go ahead and rename these to something more impressive and as you can see it actually doubled the cost. Uh, so we can name it something like Notch Blade. Notch's Blade. There you go. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and actually doubled the cost of the enchantment. But uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the benefits of renaming items later as well. So now here we are back in the Anvil GUI, and we have two swords, one with Sharpness 4, Looting 3, Knockback 2, and one with Knockback 2, Looting 3. Now if I place this one in the first slot and this one in the second slot, you can see that it will cost 32 levels to get Sharpness 4, Looting 3, Knockback 2 sword. Now obviously, if you go and look here, that's the exact same sword that we have in the first slot. So there's absolutely no benefit of doing this repair except if this sword was slightly damaged. Now if we go ahead and switch the slots on these swords, you can see that the cost went from 32 levels to 36 levels and the sword is exactly the same as it would have been via the other enchant, it's just the enchantments are in a different order. So make sure you be careful in the way that you order your items that you want to enchant. Alright, so now once again we are in the uh, GUI for the repair and name on the anvil, and uh, I have two picks here. They are both Efficiency 5 on Breaking 3, Silk Touch 1, as you can see, and they both have durability of 561. Now the difference is, this one has a name, and this one is just has its default name. Now, we want to go ahead and repair these because they're efficiency 5 picks, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll place them both in the crafting table. And as you can see, it says too expensive. Now, if we were in creative, that would say 45 levels. But instead, in survival, there is actually a level cap of 40 levels. Um, actually, I believe it's 39. You can't actually get 40. Um, so there is a 40 level cap. And you can't repair anything that will be higher than 40 levels. Um, and if we go ahead and switch these, it will also still say too expensive. And uh, it probably increased in price because it wants to keep the name of the first item. So now how are we going to go ahead and repair these? Well, you can use diamonds or whatever material is uh, the main material of the tool. So if these were iron, it'd have to be iron. If it was gold, gold, wood, wood, etc. Um, now, if we go ahead and we place this pick in here, and we place a diamond in here, you can see it'll cost 31 levels to repair it, and uh, it will uh, give us a uh, 951 durability compared to the 561 durability. And for each diamond you put in, it attempts to repair the durability by 25%. 
Um, so it will actually multiply the current durability by 25% to see what to increase it by. Um, so it's best to repair these um, when they're less damaged as it will take fewer diamonds to repair them by. So as you can see, if we go ahead and put another diamond in, it's almost fully repaired and it will cost 37 levels, but if we put another one in, it will be too expensive. So what we'll have to go ahead and do is put two diamonds in, and remember this costs 37 levels with two diamonds, so we'll go ahead and repair it. Now we can go ahead and put it back in here and try to repair it again, and as you can see, it's only 32 levels and we can top it off. So we're just going to leave it how it is, however, and so we'll put this one in here and it's the test pick and uh, we'll go ahead put two diamonds in there and you can see that other one was 37 this is actually 39 levels and it's because it's attempting to keep the name so we'll go ahead and we'll repair it as well so as you can see because of the name it was a bit more expensive now I'm gonna go ahead and damage these a bit more and then I'll be right back okay so I've went ahead and damaged these two picks once again, same picks, efficiency 4, unbreaking 3, silk touch, however this one only has 61 durability, and here we have the same pick, test pick, uh, efficiency 4, unbreaking 3, silk touch with durability of 61. Now if we go ahead and we place this one up here in the inventory and we attempt to repair it, you'll see it costs 35 levels to give it 451 durability. So we'll go ahead and we'll repair this for 35 levels. Now if we go ahead and attempt to repair the uh, test pick, we'll go ahead and place a diamond and what's this? You can see it's only 33 levels and uh, as you can see this one is the one with the name as well and uh, it is because in the code uh, there actually is a benefit of naming items um, for items that do not have a name the cost actually increases each time you've repaired them so we'll go ahead and repair this one and so basically if you name an item the cost will stop increasing so if we go ahead and place this one in, you can see it went from 35 to 37, and it's just getting more and more expensive to repair. So this one, however, place it in, and as you can see, it's still the 33 levels um, to repair it. So as you can see, there actually is a benefit to naming the items. It actually prevents the uh, cost from increasing as you repair them. Uh, as you can see, it went from 37 to 39. And if we attempt to repair this one, you can see it's still at the 33. So repairing the item that has a name actually does not increase the cost. And eventually, this one you can see, uh, it's too expensive to repair. I can't get it repaired past uh, the 231 durability mark. But this test pick right here, you can see 33 levels and the bam it's fully repaired so just remember guys to rename your items so anyway guys thanks for watching this has been doc redstone uh, like always please rate comment subscribe uh, i'd like to say thanks to side guy ryan for some of this ha some of this detail uh... information that he's given me he's looking into the code and i actually looked into the code uh, for some of this stuff myself, uh, so I thank you for helping me, or for him for helping me do that as well. So anyway, guys, this has just been a science video, and I hope to do more of them since I've been looking at the code. So if you have anything, you have any questions about villager trading, uh, tree growing, I don't know, anything like that, let me know. Uh, I found this extremely fun to test out and find out about. So anyway, guys, let me know what you would like to see. Thank you for watching. Like always, this has been Doc Redstone. Peace out, everybody.